Right now at noon, the Madison School District has a new interim superintendent with 20 years of experience in the district. And the state Supreme Court upholds lame duck laws limiting the power of the governor and attorney general. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for tuning in to News 3 Now. On this Friday afternoon, we are now officially into summer. Dave Caulfield's over at the Weather Center and kind of summary out there. Yeah, not too bad. The temperatures may be a little bit cooler than we should be for this time of year, but with the season being an hour old, we got to give the atmosphere a little bit of time at least for temperatures that is Doppler track showing uh, some strong storms and even some tornado warnings as of uh, just a few minutes ago well to the south there's kind of a uh, complex of showers and thunderstorms that's mostly going to affect uh, spots to the south if we do see any rain it will be across southwestern Wisconsin and it won't be anywhere near as strong live looking Madison at mostly cloudy skies in the WIC TV sky cam temperatures are in the low 70s and in the 60s a little bit closer to that batch of showers for southwestern Wisconsin. So today I think highs will make it a few more degrees uh, into the 70s highs in the mid 70s for Madison, but we will be falling through the 70s and 60s as we head into later today with our rain chances increasing. We'll go hour by hour as we talk about what to expect this weekend and your first alert forecast. All right, we'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you, Dave. Top in our news and new at noon, the Madison Metropolitan School District has announced Dr. Jane Belmore will become the interim superintendent. She has 20 years of experience in the Madison district as a former teacher, principal and assistant superintendent. Belmore's contract will be finalized at Monday Monday's board meeting. She replaces departing superintendent Jennifer Cheatham, who announced in early May that she was leaving for a job at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. The conservative-controlled Wisconsin Supreme Court has upheld Republican-authored lame duck laws limiting the powers of Democratic Governor Tony Evers and Attorney General Josh Call. The court handed down that decision today. A group of organizations, including the League of Women Voters, sued in January, alleging legislators convened illegally to pass the laws in December. The League of Women Voters executive director said she is disappointed in the ruling, saying Wisconsin voters put their trust in the legislature to operate with transparency, transparency and to respect constitutional limits. Senate Majority Leader Scott Fitzgerald and Assembly Speaker Robin Voss issued a statement that the court upheld a previously non-controversial practice used by both parties for decades to enact some of the most important laws in the state. A Beloit woman is facing multiple charges after allegedly trying to escape officers. According to a criminal complaint, officers arrested Chris Simplett during a traffic stop. She had an outstanding warrant and a revoked driver's license. While under arrest, she claimed that she was having trouble breathing. She begged for officers to roll down the window. She was able to slip out of her handcuffs and tried climbing out of the car. When the officer pulled over, Simplett jumped out of the car, fell on her face, and broke her ankle. She was taken to the hospital. Tensions between the U.S. and Iran remain high after the Trump administration abruptly called off a military strike to retaliate against Iran for shooting down an American drone. President Trump explained on Twitter his last-minute decision, saying that we were ready to retaliate, but when we learned 150 people would die, he called off the strike. On Twitter, the president also revealed additional economic sanctions have now been imposed on Iran. But some lawmakers and analysts believe Iran must pay a heavier price for attacking an American aircraft. The administration is going to have to respond to this or lose a lot of credibility uh, and standing in the region and around the rest of the world. After shooting down a U.S. drone, a Revolutionary Guard commander said Iran refrained from shooting down an American military plane with 35 people on board and also crossed into its airspace. The United States Supreme Court has granted a Mississippi death row inmate a new trial. The court held that the prosecutor, who tried Curtis Flowers six times for murder, engaged in unconstitutional racial discrimination when striking African-American jurors from the panel. Flowers, who is black, was tried five times for the 1996 murder of four people inside a furniture store, but it was only in 2010, after his sixth trial, that he was convicted and sentenced to death. 
New York lawmakers have voted to eliminate criminal penalties for public possession of marijuana. The measure would reduce low-level criminal charges to a violation with fines based on the amount of pot. In an effort to address decades of racial disparity and drug arrests, the bill would also allow for the expungement of past convictions for possession of small amounts of marijuana. Former Governor Scott Walker has a new gig, podcast host. He debuted his new podcast today called You Can't Recall Courage with Scott Walker. Walker discussed pay raises and property taxes in the 18-minute show, as well as Democratic Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and of New York and Wisconsin Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes. The podcast description on Spotify says the former governor will discuss politics and news of the day. Well, today is Take Your Dog to Work Day. But new research suggests that companies may want to allow pets in the office every day. Chris Martinez explains. Come on. Sabrina Ladd is never far from her pup, Kaya, even when she's on the job. She is pretty chill. I mean, she gets so much interaction with, like, everybody else brings their dogs. Sabrina brings Kaya to work every day at Procore. The software company came in number two on Rover.com's list of the most dog-friendly companies. Hundreds of employees bring their dogs to work on Procore's Southern California campus, which includes areas for pets and their owners to walk and play. I'm never feeling rushed to rush home after work to go let her out or try to rush home during my lunch break to take her for a walk. And it's also, it just makes me feel really supported by our company. In a Rover.com survey, 75% of dog owners said being able to bring their dog to work makes them more likely to stay with their employer. It sets the tone for our culture. Steve Mayer says Procore's pet policy is a selling point when recruiting new employees. I think it does set such a great atmosphere for everyone in the, in the environment, whether you love dogs or not, just because in general people are happier when there's animals around. That includes employees who don't own pets, like Abe Alba, who says he especially appreciates his furry coworkers when dealing with frustrating sales calls. It's nice when after having one of those calls, you can just turn around and there's just like a dog laying there. You can just lay with it and pet it and even take it on a walk. The dogs make even the roughest day at the office easier to take. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Carpinteria, California. Great idea. All right, tickets are now on sale for Sunflower Days at Pope Farm Conservancy. This year, the city of Middleton is hosting for the first time and charging $4 for admission. They say the tickets will help minimize large crowds, safely, safety concerns. Children 12 and under get in for free. Parking near the Conservancy is limited, so the Town of Middleton administration recommends people use shuttles that will run every 30 minutes from Wisconsin Brewing Company and the Capital Ice Arena. We have a link to buy tickets on channel3000.com. And there's more to come on News 3 Now at noon. Up next, we'll see what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. The fancied up lemonade we're making today sure has come a long way from what I used to sell in my neighborhood when I was a kid. Stick around.
Like many of you, I had a lemonade stand when I was a kid. And for a nickel, you could get a big cup of ice cold lemonade. Maybe this is where I got my love for this cool and refreshing drink. Over the years, I've tried many versions of this favorite. Everything from it being infused with watermelon juice to our latest creation, blueberry lemonade. If that sounds good to you, wait until you try this. You want to start by grabbing a saucepan and combining some water, sugar, lemon zest, and a good amount of blueberries. After we bring this to a boil, we let it simmer until the blueberries burst open and they flavor the water. We strain this so all the zest and blueberry pulp is removed and we let it cool. Now we add some fresh lemon juice, which will take about four to five lemons and a bunch of ice. When you're ready to serve this, add some sparkling water to make it extra special. Top each with some fresh mint, more lemon and blueberries, and get ready for one of the most refreshing sippers you've ever had. Is it trendy? Yes. Is it easy? Yes. Is it a keeper? That would be a double yes. To get the recipe for our blueberry lemonade, all you have to do is visit our website. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a very refreshing way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. All right, Howard, thank you. Cloudy with some thunderstorm chances on this first official day of summer. This weekend, we're reaching 80 degrees and more storm chances. Meteorologist Dave Caulfield will have all the details coming up in your first alert forecast. Our Call for Action phone bank is open right now, ready to take on your consumer issues and call our hotline. Volunteers will help you with any consumer complaints. The number is 608-270-2833. The service open every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday between 11 and 1. Escalating tensions between the U.S. and Iran may cause issues with an Exxon Mobil oil project. And tourists are canceling trips to the Dominican Republic as more people fall ill. Laura Podesta has your Money Watch report.
ExxonMobil's massive oil project in Iraq could be in jeopardy. Negotiations have stalled on the $53 billion venture that would expand the company's reach in the region. Security concerns have forced Exxon execs to evacuate the country twice, and escalating tensions between the U.S. and neighboring Iran have made matters worse. Airbus wrapped up a big week at the Paris Air Show with more than twice as many orders as Boeing. The European plane maker secured nearly 600 orders for aircraft, according to consulting firm IBA.IQ. Boeing left the show with just 234 orders, nearly all of those for its grounded 737 MAX. And if you're planning on skipping your upcoming trip to the Dominican Republic, you are not alone. As the list of tourists who have died or have fallen ill grows, the company Ensure My Trip reports three out of every ten calls it's getting are for trip cancellations to the DR. And would you eat salmon that is genetically engineered? Sounds fishy, right? The company Aqua Bounty is injecting Atlantic salmon with DNA from other fish species to make them grow full size in 18 months. That's twice as fast as the normal salmon. It's all been approved by government regulators, but grocers like Whole Foods have already vowed not to sell the fish, which could be in restaurants by late next year. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the CBS News Broadcast Center, I'm Laura Podesta. Thank you, Laura. The Dow Industrials up 43 points at the noon hour. The Nasdaq, however, down eight. The S&P 500 down exactly one point. Q106 Farm Director Pam Yonke out of the radio barn today. So here are your farm numbers. And time now for the weather. Big weekend in Mass, big golf tournament in town. Yeah, the AmFam uh, Championship, and we are watching for some showers and thunderstorms over the next couple of days. It won't be a washout by any means. And the good news I have to share at this noon hour is our rain chances for Saturday have gone down a little bit. On Sunday, though, we still probably will need that umbrella. But summer is here. That's the other big news as of 1054 this morning. So the season only about an hour and a half old and temperatures are still what we'd expect typically more for spring than summer but we got to give the atmosphere a little bit of time 71 in Madison 73 right now in Janesville and 70 in Waukesha but we will get that summertime heat and humidity especially as we get into next week so typically we should be right around 80 degrees I think we'll be about five degrees short of that today but into next week you can see those orange bars there those are temperatures well into the 80s and with that humidity especially Especially by the time we get to next weekend, we could be talking about heat index values returning to our vocabulary and we could be talking about it feeling like 90 degrees in portions of southern Wisconsin. So stay tuned uh, for details on that visible cloud track showing the high clouds that have been around for much of the morning. So mostly cloudy skies showing up in Platteville. Not too much sunshine to come by for the start of summer. And that's the case as well on the WIC TV Skycam in Madison. And 
Why are we seeing the clouds? Well, we have a batch of showers and thunderstorms to the south, and the clouds are extending well ahead uh, of this kind of complex of showers and storms. We've had some tornado warnings uh, closer to St. Louis throughout the morning hours and severe thunderstorm warnings uh, closer to really the core of the strongest shower and thunderstorm activity for us. We're noticing some light showers uh, closer to northeastern and eastern Iowa, but as these get closer to the Mississippi River, River Valley, they're kind of fizzling, so I'll keep a slight chance of showers and storms in the forecast for this afternoon. But really, I think we're going to probably be dry. We're going to need that umbrella for tonight and into portions of Saturday. But as I mentioned, those rain chances for Saturday have really dwindled a little bit on our latest forecast models. However, on Sunday, we still will definitely need that umbrella with periods of showers and thunderstorms possible. So on future track, we notice not too much in the way of activity popping up across Southern Wisconsin. If we do see any showers, most likely it will be across southwestern Wisconsin for the rest of today. By Saturday, starting off in the 50s and 60s, once again, highs should make it into the upper 70s with really not too much popping up uh, across. Uh, across southern Wisconsin over the course of Saturday. There we go, words. And then as we get into Sunday, though, we start to see some of that activity uh, pop up closer to Madison. So we'll keep uh, shower and thunderstorm chances in for Sunday and for Monday as well with temperatures near 80 as we take a look at the 10 day forecast. Then that humidity really starts to uh, take hold of southern Wisconsin into next week and next weekend. We could be talking about real or uh, real feels heat index, whatever you want to call it in the low 90s at times. So if you were wondering where summer was, <laughs> We found it. Don't, we com don't complain about 75. Exactly. We're, uh, we're definitely going to get warmer over the course of the next week or so. All right. Thank you, Dave. A family in Florida gets to experience the gift of hearing with their toddler for the first time. Stay with us.
Well, watch in amazement now as a toddler in Florida hears I love you from her mom for the first time. Sean Daly has the story. Adasia Rivers is almost two years old. She's been deaf since birth. Her father and sister are also hearing impaired. But thanks to cochlear implants, which are so advanced now they can link to Bluetooth, Adasia is about to hear for the very first time. Her mom, Patricia, couldn't sleep last night. I was up. I'm like, is it time yet? No, not yet. Is it time yet? No, not yet. Johns Hopkins All Children's Audiologist Shelly Ash says this moment never gets old. When we first start out, we're introducing seeing very soft levels of electrical current, and it just sounds to her like beep, beep, oh. beep, beep. Yeah. <laughs> I hear that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put it in. But soon enough, it's time for the really big moment. We're going to talk to the baby now, this is it. Okay. okay? Hi, I love you, babe. Love. I love you so much. And then the granny, the granny love you. I granny love you. The first time you can hear granny say I love you. Because Adesha has the cochlear implants early, her language development will only be slightly delayed. Dad Robert says this is a special day. Great. He feels great. He feels great. <laughs> I bet you do. That face. What a great story. All right, Dave, looking toward the weekend. Yeah, at least we will have some nice temperatures for the rest of today with highs in the mid 70s under mostly cloudy skies. I can't rule out a few rain showers, especially across southwestern Wisconsin for today. Your day planner rain chances go up a little bit as we get into tomorrow morning, but overall they've actually been trending downward uh, as we get into Saturday. Not for Sunday and Monday though. We'll keep those shower and thunderstorm chances in the forecast with temperatures near 80 and then humid and summer like for next week. Summer's here. All right, that's our time for now. We'll see you back here at four. Have a great afternoon.